This is Nate with Landmark Implement, and today I'll be going over John Deere planners equipped with SeedStar 4 monitoring systems. There are many different layouts that we can have with the SeedStar 4 system and Gen 4 monitors, all of which can be built with custom pages using Layout Manager through the menu. For today, I'll be talking through the main planner details page that is one of the default planner pages that comes with SeedStar 4. Starting in the upper left hand corner, we see our planner population, our gauge wheel information, our easy adjust row cleaner settings, the current planner singulation, spacing, and closing wheels. All of these icons we'll see will adjust colors depending on how close they are to the targets that are pre-selected on each one. If the icon is showing green, we know that we're within the alarm range on that icon. If we see them change over to the orange color, then they're getting close to the out of range area. And then if they turn red, they're out of our default alarm area. These alarms can be set up and adjusted in tools that we'll see in a little bit. We also see below that initial overview of each of these settings, we'll always have our planner population displayed with our planner at a glance menu that's been used on previous versions of SeedStar. This is where we're used to seeing our bar graph shown for each row unit to represent the current population that's being planted on that row unit. We still do have our planner scan showing our row unit that is planning at the highest rate. The next one down is where we can pick and choose a particular row unit that we'd like to monitor. And then the bottom one there is showing our row unit that's performing at the lowest rate. As we come up here and start with our population, if we push, uh, push on this icon, this will give us the option to come in and pre-select and change our rates. We can always come in to choose other rates as well as turn some of those rates on if they're currently disabled. And then also select and load a prescription rate. So now that we have that third rate enabled, we can see that it's available on the list to be entered in. Anytime that we want to go back to the main planner overview, we select this icon in the upper left hand corner, bringing us back to our starting point. If we push on our gauge wheel icon here, this will further break out information being recorded on each row unit. It's going to display in a graph here our ground contact level and also our downforce level if we cycle through those two settings. It does show us here that we have a target downforce margin of 100 pounds, and we can see how those row units are responding to that target. Again, similar to our row unit performance for population, we do have this system that's going to scan and show us our row units that are performing on the top of that scale at the highest level and which one is going to be at the lowest compared to that target range. If we come back up to our lower left-hand corner and push on that icon, that'll bring us back to our main overview. We can come in down here in the bottom with this preloaded default, we do have our downforce option. You'll notice many icons on the Gen 4 monitor will look like they do not have an icon or a button to push. However, when pushing on them, most of those will display another page or alternate options. So in this scenario, when I push on the gauge wheel box, we get this pop-up where I can come in and increase or decrease that gauge wheel weight and our overall downforce margin. Coming back up here to our easy adjust row cleaners, we can see our current set points for our overall planner together, our center section and wing sections. When we push on that, we get more options. From here, we can adjust our preset numbers by selecting one, two, or three, which will then make the adjustment to what was stored in that preset. And then for more additional settings, we can push on our wings or center, and that will allow us to individually adjust those sections or sync our wings and our center together to have one adjustment. To have our row cleaners run mostly rigid in the field, it's advised that we adjust our down pressure and up pressure setting to be very similar. 
uh, once we get those row cleaners in the position that we want, setting those pressure settings similar will keep that row cleaner somewhat stationary and consistent. If we hit the X button in the upper right, that'll bring us back to our main row cleaner adjustments. We can use these boxes here on the right hand side if we'd like to raise all of those row cleaners up and out of the way if we're going through a draw or we don't need those row cleaners in that part of the field. And then when we're ready to resume and put them back down, we can use the down arrow and that'll resume that preset position. Coming back to our button in the upper left hand corner, we'll reset back to our main planner overview. The next box is going to be our planner singulation. We push on that box, we'll see the singulation broke down in a bar graph again at our planner at a glance box. Any of these bar graphs that are going up from this center position are showing those row units um, kicking out a double seed. And if we see them drag to the bottom side, that would indicate that we have a skip scenario. We also see our averages on row units that are performing at the highest or lowest in relation to the target value. And then we do see that percentage again here at the top of that singulation page. We'll go back here to the upper left. So we see our main planner overview again. And now we'll dive into seed spacing. Similar to the other ones, uh, we have our bar graph shown and it's displaying our coefficient of variation which is a representation of overall seed spacing. It's common to see these values being displayed at a 0.10 to a 0.30 range. In a perfect scenario, these would be at zero all the time with absolute perfect spacing. If we see those scales and those bar graphs start to climb up, and again, we'll see these bar graphs change color to show that we're out of our tolerance range and getting close to an alarm scenario and poor performance off that row unit. We do have our scan options to show which row unit is performing the worst in this scenario. So next we'll jump back up here and resume back to our main planner overview. Next we'll jump down to our closing wheel system. If we push on that, we can adjust where we currently have our closing wheel system set at. By pushing on those box, we'll get our adjustment option page. From here, we can separate the left and right side of the planner between our two groups, or we can sync them together to have one adjustment. So we can increase this target up, similar to adjusting if you had a spring closing system, adjusting to that notch on the planner. The icon on the left of this graph is displaying where we currently have the adjustment at and the right side is displaying uh, the target pressure to go back to achieve what we've set here on the left-hand side. Using the X button, this will bring us back to our main overview of the closing wheel adjustment. And then coming back to the upper left, to that icon that will bring us back to our main planner overview. Similar to previous versions of SeedStar, we do still have our status gear icon when we're operating through the field, this icon should be green and all of the boxes filled out, indicating that we do have the planter down on the ground, which is the bottom portion. And the upper right is showing that we have forward movement and speed being detected by the planter. If we stop this simulator, we'll see that speed box go away. And then if we go and simulate raising the planter up, we'll see this last icon go away indicating that the planner is up in the air. This is a good tool to use to help diagnose issues with speed pickup sensors or planner height switch sensors in wiring when in the field. Now that we've got the planner stopped and up in the air, we can go through some of the tools that we have with SeedStar 4. The first box is gonna be our seed and alarm setup. This is where you can adjust and change different seed discs that you have for your crop type. The next tab is our product alarms. This will be filled out by default, but you can come in here and adjust your targets if you'd like to be warned at a different percentage level that you're off or of a different coefficient variation, which is your spacing. 
the last tab of an option here is going to be some of your numbers that you'll have for warnings in relation to gauge wheels and downforce performance. We'll hit the X to back up. The next item to set up will be our planner setup icon. This will give you a shortcut to your equipment setup page that you would normally set up when setting up all of your equipment on a Gen 4 monitor. By pushing on that, we can confirm some of the settings that are in there. This will pull in a lot of information based off of the Seedstar 4 module that's on the planner and serial number, and also load the default settings for that planner, which would have been entered in during its initial setup. The next item down on the list is our frame control option. This would be relevant to planners that are set up with the easy fold option. The next item down is our planner runoff procedures. This brings us in to give us the ability to go in and individually test each meter for its overall performance and make adjustments to that meter if needed. We can also come in and do a runoff on those meters to completely clean out one particular meter. And then the last option that we can do in this runoff procedure is a complete planner runoff. So this would be something you could do if you're doing a crop changeover or changing varieties or crop types. All of these runoff procedures and row unit testing options are very good when helping diagnose performance issues on a row unit or helping set the planter initially with seed before actually going out to the field. By hitting the X, we'll go back here to our main planter tools page. The next one down on the list is our planter diagnostics and calibration menu. Once we get into our planter and diagnostics calibrations page, we have a few different tabs on the left to dive into each of those separately. Now, the first one is our planner diagnostics. This will give us the ability to dive into and help diagnose each of the systems hooked up to the planner. The next item down is our planner calibrations. It's important to go through and recheck these calibrations at the beginning of each season. This will help ensure that all gauge wheel way pin sensors are performing properly and also our height sensors are working properly. If we happen to fail those calibrations, that's a good indicator that we have one of those components that has failed that can be addressed before we get to the field. The last option that we have in the planner diagnostics and calibration is some of our procedures. In this list, we'll have some shortcuts. Each of those will take us to some different procedures and tests that will walk you through uh, doing some onboard diagnostics and tests with the planner. We can go ahead and exit out of here to move all the way back to our planner tools page. The last item on this list is our overall diagnostic center from our Gen 4 monitor. This will help us break down some of the diagnostic codes and trouble codes that we might have with the planner.